Blessed be our God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see. And that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days through him The will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of Hebrews. The Holy Spirit testifies, saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord.
there is a bit of wisdom that transcends religious boundaries. This wisdom suggests that picking up a spiritual truth is akin to picking up a snake. If we get hold of it the wrong way, it's going to cause harm to ourselves and to those around us. Encountering the profound suffering in the story of Jesus' death seems just the time to take this wisdom to heart. Let us not grab hold of it by demanding an understanding that satisfies. We do not sit before the cross today to tighten up our theology, to get an intellectually satisfying explanation or an idea of ourselves as superior to other spiritual seekers. We have an image from our own tradition of Moses lifting up a serpent in the wilderness so that all who look upon it are healed. In the same way, Jesus himself is lifted up and bears for us the paradox of healing made real amidst suffering for all who are willing to look upon him. We place ourselves before the passion of Jesus to have our hearts broken open so that they stay wide open. In the first few months after I had lost my father to kidney cancer, I would unconsciously sort any room in a matter of moments. Here were the people who had lost a parent. Here were the people who had not. I craved the common understanding I expected to find among others who had experienced that kind of loss, people who might have charted life-saving trails in the vast geography of grief. Others have found health and help in this same intuitive search, in recovery groups and support groups, by seeking the company of fellow travelers. Someone who has gone before us can lend an arm for the tricky places that make us stumble, or show us when to leap vigorously and trust that we will reach the other side but our trials do not need to have the same plot lines. People who suffer the human condition have something to give one another. There is a saving help in the way that grief and loss of any kind can humble us and turn us toward one another. Deep communion is revealed when pain is shared and the fruit of that communion is compassion beyond ourselves and our circle of understanding. No wonder the insistence of Christianity in keeping the cross at the center of our identity. Look upon Jesus, we proclaim. He has been crucified. In Jesus, we see the suffering of all lives, cheated or denied or cut short. We bring our sorrow and contemplate our failure here, reflected in the image of Jesus crucified. We come to encounter the truth of the pain of the world of loss and injustice. All these things we see reflected in the broken body of Jesus. We hold them gently here within God's presence. We give and we receive. We see and we are seen. And all of that happens within God's loving presence. My phone has been alerting me throughout this week to devastating news. Alongside the tragic updates from the bridge collapse in Baltimore, and the emerging signs of famine in Gaza, and the continuing contemptuous political scene in our own country, I've also been receiving messages that read like this. Late last night, breaking news, Jesus arrested in the garden by Roman guards and the high priest. Peter cuts off the high priest's servant's ear. Jesus heals him and calls for peace. Update 3 a.m. Jesus is now in front of the religious authorities for questioning. They are enraged because Jesus says little and does not fall for their verbal traps. Four o'clock. Breaking news. Peter denies knowing Jesus, the rooster crows. The disciples just realized that Jesus knew they would scatter, hide, and deny them. Update, 8 a.m. today.
Jesus just arrived before the Roman governor Pilate for sentencing. The crowd is starting to whisper what others have started to yell, crucify him. The messages are an experimental offering from Virginia Seminary, meant to invite the subscriber to stay present to the story of Jesus' passion throughout Holy Week, prompts meant to help us turn our attention again and again to the present moment reality of the ways Jesus suffers through those other headlines that come our way. An invitation to look again and to hold our gaze upon the cross of Christ. I wonder what changes when we look upon a desolating truth without turning away. We see the full and limitless reality of God's willingness to be present with us. Who else can we see more clearly, having seen Jesus in this way? God has no desire for us to be lost to the overwhelm of suffering, to immerse ourselves in the sorrow of others of our own soul without recourse, to belong to despair. Yet if we can open ourselves to this sorrow and everything it reveals about us and about the disordered violence of this world, perhaps we may find our unity in shared compassion rather than shared contempt. Can the suffering Jesus begin to change us even before we dare to hope in something beyond the grave? I think of the words of Naomi Shiab Nye from her well-beloved poem, Kindness. Before you know kindness as the deepest thing inside, you must know sorrow as the other deepest thing. You must wake up with sorrow. You must speak it till your voice catches the thread of all sorrows and you see the size of the cloth. Then it is only kindness that makes sense anymore only kindness that ties your shoes and sends you out into the day to gaze at bread, only kindness that raises its head from the crowd of the world to say, it is I you have been looking for, and then goes with you everywhere, like a shadow or a friend. When Christians say we glory in the cross, it is not understood to be a love of suffering for suffering's sake. It is not because we have found a snake we can hold and wield as a threat or as a defense. It is a proclamation of the mystery that when we meet Jesus in his pain and allow him to meet us in our own, a profound transformation begins. Gazing from the cross lifted high to the grief of the contemporary moment, and back to the cross again, digs the furrows where resurrection may one day burst into bloom. Love with its seed of compassion and longed for fruits of justice and kindness and peace begins to take root in that ready earth. What is salvation but wholeness? Before we know resurrection, we find communion in our sorrow and in these seeds of compassion. Everything belongs. Dear people of God, our Heavenly Father sent His Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved, that all who believe in Him might be delivered from the power of sin and death and become heirs with Him in everlasting life. 
We pray, therefore, for people everywhere according to their needs. Let us pray for the Holy Catholic Church of Christ throughout the world, for its unity in witness and service, for all bishops and other ministers and the people whom they serve, for David, our bishop, and all the people of this diocese, for all Christians in this community, for those about to be baptized, Matthew, Michael, Ella, Sterling, Mason, Connor, and Lucia. That God will confirm his church in faith, increase it in love, and preserve it in peace. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all nations and peoples of the earth and for those in authority among them. For Joseph, the President of the United States, for the Congress and the Supreme Court, for the members and representatives of the United Nations, for all who serve the common good, that by God's help they may seek justice and truth and live in peace and concord. Almighty God, kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your dominion may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us pray for all who suffer and are afflicted in body or in mind, for the hungry and the homeless, the destitute and the oppressed, for the sick, the wounded and the crippled, for those in loneliness, fear and anguish, for those who face temptation, doubt and despair, for the sorrowful and bereaved, for prisoners and captives and those in mortal danger, that God in his mercy will comfort and relieve them and grant them the knowledge of his love and stir up in us the will and patience to minister to their needs.
Gracious God, the comfort of all sorrow, the strength of all who suffer. Let the cry of those in misery and need come to you, that they may find your mercy present with them in all their afflictions. And give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who have not received the gospel of Christ, for those who have never heard the word of salvation, for those who have lost their faith, for those hardened by sin or indifference, for the contemptuous and the scornful, for those who are enemies of the cross of Christ and persecutors of his disciples for those who in the name of Christ have persecuted others, that God will open their hearts to the truth and lead them to faith and obedience. Merciful God, creator of all the peoples of the earth and lover of souls, have compassion on all who do not know you as you are revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ. Let your gospel be preached with grace and power to those who have not heard it. Turn the hearts of those who resist it and bring home to your fold those who have gone astray that there may be one flock under one shepherd, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us commit ourselves to our God and pray for the grace of a holy life that with all who have departed this world and have died in the peace of Christ, and those whose faith is known to God alone, we may be accounted worthy to enter into the fullness of the joy of our Lord and receive the crown of life in the day of resurrection. Amen. God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably upon your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in it tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, we pray you to set your passion, cross, and death between your judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. Give mercy and grace to the living, pardon and rest to the dead. To your holy church, peace and concord, and to us sinners, everlasting life and glory. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.